Hello, everyone. Have you ever thought of the difference in the words exile and redemption as they are in Hebrew? Exile in Hebrew is gola, gimel, vav, lamed, hey. Redemption in Hebrew is geula, gimel, aleph, vav, lamed, hey. So you can see the only difference is that redemption has the letter Aleph in it. The letter Aleph is the one, is the Holy One, blessed be He. We sing on Seder night, Echad miyodeya, who knows one? Echad aniyodeya, I know one. Echad Eloheinu, 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 Sheba Shamayim Uva Aretz. One is our God, the God of heaven and earth. So, this theme of exile and redemption is connected, of course, with Passover, which is fast approaching. And today we're going to be looking at the purpose of exile and our own inner exile. Now, why do we need to have had an exile in the first place? Couldn't God have just managed without sending the children of Israel to Egypt? Why did they have to have Egypt? Exile connotates lack, darkness, an absence of connection. Can there be a purpose to lack? The answer is that the purpose of lack is that through the lack, the revelation of the good is greater. The light shines out the greater, the deeper the darkness from which it springs. Rabbi Ashlag, in his Haggadah, which is called Zot Lihuda, discusses the fact that ultimately the fulfillment of a lack depends on what the lack is for. He comments on the phrase from Psalms which says, God will save both man and beast. So he says, well, what does a man lack? What does a human being lack? Which is different from that which a beast lacks. Now, actually, all our lacks are pretty identical to those found in the animal kingdom, except that we long to serve God. We long to be with the one. Even issues of emotional satisfaction or governance which seem to us to be pretty well human lacks, can be found in the animal kingdom. But what can't be found is the purely human lack of closeness with God, l- separation from God. Animals are not separate from God. They're doing God's will. But we can be separate. And this is the human exile. Oh, we do not need a physical ancient Egypt to feel that exile, do we? So this is the Galut. This is our true exile, our lack of connection with the One. Now, how does that express itself? Well, what we can do is if we look at the Egyptian exile with our inner eye, we can find all its elements within ourselves. And that is really the inner meaning of the phrase in the Haggadah that we're going to read on Sedem night, that a man should consider himself as if he himself came out of Egypt. And when I say a man, of course, I mean a woman as well. A a person should consider themselves as if they themselves came out of Egypt. Now, Egypt in those days epitomized the ultimate of the material civilization. But it didn't have a connection with the living God, with the source of all life. It worshipped the opposite, actually. The Egyptians worshipped death. I mean, look at their pyramids that they built with slave labor. Look at the whole glorification of death. Now, death, the word death in the Kabbalah has a specific meaning. It means the ultimate exile, the ultimate lack of connection with the Holy Blessed One. And the wicked are called dead in their lifetime because they are disconnected from their source. We can go further. We can look at Pharaoh. Pharaoh did not want to believe in the one. Pharaoh did not want to believe in God. He wanted to believe in his own rationale. Why should we let the children of Israel go? Why should we? There's no logical reason why we should let these fantastic slaves go. Okay. So he asks the ultimate question. Who is God that I should listen to him? And the Kabbalah teaches 
that this is the question of the ego. The ego wants to occupy our entire inner space, our entire inner consciousness. And when we are in that place of the ego, it says, who is God that I should listen to him? Even if we have a higher impulse, it doesn't want to hear it. And that's the Pharaoh inside each one of us. Like the Pharaoh of old, our own ego wants to enslave our soul. It wants to enslave our own Israel, which is within us, which wants to serve God. So being in exile, being in our inner exile, is actually being ruled by our own inner Pharaoh, the part of us who only wants to serve the ego and does not want to believe in the one. I'm asking myself a question. I want to know, how can we get from the inner exile to the inner redemption? The Gula, the redemption, in the story of the coming out of Egypt, starts in the Bible when it says, And it came to pass in those days that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed because of the hard work, and they cried out to God, and their cry for help went up to God because of the slavery. And then God heard their cry, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God saw the children of Israel, and God knew. We need to ask, what is the connection between the king of Egypt dying and the prayers and cries of the children of Israel being heard? I mean, didn't they cry and pray when he was still alive? Why was it just when he died that his prayers were heard? And the answer is, is that the Pharaoh inside of us, which is our will to receive just for ourselves alone, seems to be so powerful. We get so caught up. He seems to rule. And the more we work to overcome him, the more we seem to go backwards. It seems as if that ego is stopping us progressing. The ego is acting like a Pharaoh. And that's the meaning of exile. We think we're enslaved to it, but it's actually an illusion. But really, that Israel inside of us is longing for its connection with the one. We need to focus on the good. We need to focus on the Israel within us. We need to focus on our positive impulses and not focus so much on where we go wrong. And do you know, if we focus on the positive and we leave old Pharaoh inside us alone, that Pharaoh will simply die. That Pharaoh will just die. And when he's dead, our prayers will be heard. And when our prayers are heard, our connection with the One can be fulfilled in all its glory and all its beauty. And then we are really on our way from exile to redemption. So just keep on with the positive. Keep on with the Torah and the mitzvot. Keep on with trying to do good for each other. Keep on with the goodness of giving. And that emphasis on the positive. And we know that that Pharaoh is there, but we don't have to listen to him. Just let him die. And then our prayers for redemption will be heard. And then God will remember the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob our fathers who are inside each one of us and God brings us from the exile to redemption.